Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And so we just talked, uh, so now we're going to major on the word called obedience. <laughs> Faith and obedience. So, you know, in the scriptures, there's always two words that kind of explain everything. Hell, heaven. Death, life. Prosperity, poverty. And then there's obedience or disobedience. Now, to disobey your parents was not a good thing. And to disobey God is also not a good thing. And so we're going to, we'll look at it and we'll start, first of all, about the word that's in God's mouth. And we talked on it in some other session, but it's, uh, it's okay for us to review some things as we get into the subject of obedience. So first of all, the word of God in God's mouth. In other words, his word in his mouth. And remember, we had in one session, for those of you that have been with us for a while, and for those of you that had, if you're new and just started listening, we see that God spoke everything into existence. We see in Genesis chapter 1, and I've highlighted all, you know, every verse that said, like for example, in verse 3, then God said, let there be light. Verse 6, then God said, let there be firm in the midst of the waters, let divide the waters from the waters. Let the waters from the waters. And then God said, verse 9, let the waters of the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And then God said, let the earth bring forth grass. See, God spoke everything into existence. And then God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness, verse 20. So he spoke. The words came out of his mouth. His word was in his mouth. And then we can come back here to Hebrews chapter 11, and pick it up, I just want, well, actually, we'll, well, let me get there. And we come up here to verse uh, 1. It's good to start right there. Now, the faith is the substance, remember how we talked about that? Or the title deed of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you can see that faith then gives substance to those things that are hoped for. And, of course, biblical hope is different than the hope of the world. Uh, you know, the world says, well, I sure hope it's so, I sure hope it happens, I sure hope it comes to pass, you know, but when you talk about hope with God, Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So our hope is in God's word, in his promises, and he cannot lie. He always, it, 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 he, 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 uh, he fulfills everything that he promises. But now look at verse 3. By faith, if Hebrews 11, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So we just saw that in Genesis 3. He spoke everything, they were framed with the words that come out of his mouth. Everything, the entire universe, everything that's ever been created, all has been words that come out of God's mouth. Words which he believed in his heart, obviously. All right. So by faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen, everything in this physical dimension that we see, the universe, the stars, the earth, the people and animals and all the plants and everything in this world, so the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So everything that you see in this physical realm was made, the spiritual realm created it. It was made by things not visible. God's a spirit. And so everything that's been created, this physical dimension was created by God, who is a spirit created by that which is not visible. So spiritual realm, the spiritual realm, is where reality is. It created everything. God is a spirit. So that's where reality is. This physical dimension that's been created, where you and I are in right now, a little over a thousand years will be consumed in fire. And then there'll be a brand new heaven and a new earth. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 13 would be a good portion of scripture to read concerning that. All right. So then, also as we come to the Gospels, and let me pick it up here in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, the Word. 
God the Son is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is God. He is the Word of God. He, Jesus, was in the beginning with God. In other words, he's always existed. All things were made through him, and without him, without Jesus, without the Word of God, nothing was made that was made. So every single thing that exists in this physical dimension was made with the Word of God with the word of God, with the word of God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. And verse 14, well, verse 10, he, Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Verse 14, and the word, that's Jesus, the word of God, Jesus is the word of God, was became flesh and dwelt among us. So the word became flesh. And in verse 18, no one has seen God at any time. No one has seen God. So he took on a form of a human being. Jesus did. God did. The Word of God. So that we could, so that through Jesus we could get to know the one whom we cannot see. Hallelujah. No one has seen God at any time. The one who dwells in that unapproachable light. And no one has ever seen his face. And that would be what? Um... Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and, well, verse 16. You know, my mind just kind of slipped there a little bit, but let's see that where we are. And we get to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. Who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. All right. So then, everything has been spoken into existence. And then there's another verse which... I've learned to use quite a bit, and you'll understand here, while well, you probably won't understand right away, but Romans 4 and 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God. Now watch these last couple lines. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. He calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So in other words, there was no light. God said, let there be light. He called that which did not exist. And let us create man in their own image and likeness. Well, man did not create, was not created at this point. You couldn't see it. It didn't exist. And God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. So he calls those things which be not as though they did. He calls those things which do not exist as though they did. I need healing in my body. By the stripes of Jesus, my body is healed of arthritis. Well, the healing does not exist. The arthritis is there. But God's word says I'm healed. So I call those things which do not exist as though they did. I declare that my body is healed of all arthritis in the name of Jesus because God's word says that through the blood of Jesus, I am healed of all sickness and diseases of kind, known or unknown, including arthritis. So God calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Wow, now that's a, that is a principle you want to you write that verse down, Romans 4, 17. Because you'll end up using that a lot in your daily prayer life and, and when you're praying for people and everything else because we need to do what? We need to do it the way God does it. We are to imitate God. And so he does it that way. And I don't know. Let me come back here to, uh, well, where am I now? Uh, let's see. Oh, um, and 8 and 12. All right. So then, let me come back over here then. We are to be imitators of God. And it's like the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Now Christ is God. So we are to imitate God or Christ. Well, how did God do it? He spoke it. He believed it. He called those things which do not exist as though they did and spoke it into existence. All right. Oh, my goodness. We're out of time. Well, you just be blessed until we meet next time. Praise the Lord. Amen.